Hello everybody, I'm glad you're here today. Today is March 27th, 2024. In this video, I will bring you a word uh, that I wrote this morning while I was in worship. Uh, and it is encouraging as well as insightful. So I think you need to hang on to the end when I read that to you. I'm going to show you what I just bought. I've never bought anything from this company before. And I'm going to show you because I think you're going to be interested in it. Possibly. I thought it was a pretty good price. Y'all, I'm not made of money. Now, maybe you are. Maybe you're not. I don't know. I am not made of money. So uh, what we do when we buy prepping stuff is I save up my money. All right. And we have a little envelope. We do. I'll just share this with you oh my goodness it's just a little budgeting tidbit if your adult children need to hear this this might help them uh well gosh it might help senior citizens who knows uh so uh what we do um i'm a visual person and my husband is is a um not okay i see things in pictures and colors and that's how i think and he thinks in words and numbers and columns does that make sense? We're worlds apart, worlds apart. So once we finally hit our stride in running our finances, our family finances, he is very keen on budget, sticking to the budget, and and doing wonderfully at that. Um, I am like, don't care, but I don't spend money. Okay, so I'm not a spender. So that we work very well together. Well, one of the things that has really helped us is handing me the responsibility of the household money, uh, <clears throat> which is a weekly income, and we have envelopes, that, like real envelopes, just, you know, the white letter size. It doesn't matter what, what you do. You can, use, you can use folders, whatever. Anyway, we label what we spend money on. Uh, the groceries, um, it used to be homeschooling expense when we homeschooled, uh, clothes, um, you know, those kinds of things, all right, um, like even cleaning supplies, uh, the, the chicken feed stuff, all of these things that we spend money on has an envelope for it, all right, and there's a weekly amount that goes into each envelope, cash, and so I can see how much cash is in that envelope, whether it's low or not, how much we have for that week, and that helps me, all right? And so once we crack that code, man, we're rolling good with our budget. So I have a prepping envelope, and every once in a while, I'll put that in it. All right, yeah, another thing is like how much gasoline costs, which that envelope is getting lower every week. Oh, my word, the price of gasoline going up. A lot of you have said it's because of this travel that you think everyone's going to be doing during on April 8th for the eclipse. I think that makes sense to me. What do y'all think? I think it's going to be weird that day. I don't know. I, I kind of, I don't know. I don't understand why the hubbub of that particular day. I know many of you have said, this is a big historical event. I would have to take issue with that just ever so slightly in that I, I understand what you're saying and I get that. But I mean, we just had a total eclipse in 2017 and this is going to happen again in in 20 years. I mean, if 20 years, I'm still probably going to be alive, probably. And, 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 and so, you know, it's not like I'm never going to see this ever again. And I'm, I'm one of the older parts of the generation that are alive today, the people on earth. So I don't know. I don't know. People are getting all in a, in a tizzy over that. And, and so we shall see what that, I'll tell you a couple of things. Here's before I show you that I'm so excited. I keep looking down at this cause I'm excited to show you. Um, but a couple of the things that we're doing in preparation for April 8th, and then a gen uh, one big project we're, we're fixing to start on, I hope. Um, one of the things we're doing is <clears throat> currently our daughter Taylor is the only one that's going to be out that day. She is beefing up her uh, bug out bag. Uh, you know, it's the it's the bag you put in the car that has the stuff in it that you might need in case you have car trouble or blizzard or, you know, whatever. Get stranded in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so she's beefing that up. Water, uh, beef jerky, first aid supplies. Uh, she's going to have good shoes on that day. Whatever. She's going to be in a 15-mile radius of our house. So it's possible, very possible, that um, probable that she'll be able to walk home in a day if something were to happen, like an EMP or who knows. So that that is one thing we're doing. Second thing we're doing is apparently, y'all, this is why you need to communicate with your family. 
I thought everyone was on the same page. When you walk home, you're, if you're in another town, you're going to walk home in this way. In this way. And it has to do with the railroad tracks that are connected to every town around us. All right? So it's like, hey, when you walk home, you get on this side of those tracks. And, and then if we are able to come looking for you, we'll at least know the route you were walking on. Okay, so that's our... that. I thought everyone knew that. Yesterday, she and I were talking, and I said, I was like doing a little test, y'all. I was like, okay, and if you have to walk home, Taylor, you will be where? Where will we be able to find you if we can get to you? And she said, well, I thought I'd go that back road down by 10 Mile Corner and just go down this way. And I thought, girl, what are you talking about? You, what? Where have you been? I said, no, that's not the family plan. I said, she said, well, I didn't get the memo. And I said, well, you're getting it now. Girl, you are supposed to walk here. All right. That's the plan. And so anyway, we looked on Google Earth. We saw that it was, yeah, straight shot. Anyway, I would recommend you set that up. And if you think your family knows, don't take that for granted. All right. My children are smart. All right, I, I'm glad. God gave me smart children. But sometimes I'm like, where have you been? Like, and, and, then, and so anyway, um, <clears throat> so there is that. Uh, I would recommend you doing that. Now then, one of the things that I have noticed, and I don't understand this exactly. I don't know if this is a thing or not. I've noticed August and Farms has put so, uh, their uh, like 30-day freeze-dried meals in a bucket um, on sale. I don't, haven't looked lately on Amazon to see if they're still on sale, but man, oh man, I took advantage of that. Okay. And, and man, it, they were just dropping like, at, at first I was like, oh wow, look at this price. That's a great price. I got, I was in the process of ordering and it went like 15 left, order soon, seven left, order soon, three left, order soon. And then it was like, you're, if you order now, you're not going to get it till next month or in May. And I was like, Oh, wow. So those were going super fast. I don't know if that's Amazon's way of making you be nervous and pulling the trigger on your orders. I don't know. Maybe it is. I kind of, I thought this was kind of real. So I have been noticing that and I have taken advantage of those prices. Now, what I fear, <laughs> hang on, I got to get this, y'all. <laughs> what I fear Maybe more than radiation fallout from a nuclear explosion is a caffeine headache during the apocalypse, y'all. I love, I don't drink a lot of coffee, but my children did this to me. The kids did this to me. As soon as I had my first baby, I was like, man, I am hooked on coffee. There's no way I'm going to get through parenthood without drinking a bucket load of coffee every morning. So, that is what I am. And so, I, w I have been wondering what I, the way I've been prepping with my coffee, y'all, is just buying a lot of it, and then I go through it, like, you know, you rotate your preps out. Uh, and at any one time, sometimes I'm getting low, and I don't like that. So, I do have some instant coffee, all right? Not a lot, and I don't know how long, and they won't last long. So, lo and behold, and when I listen to N.Y. Prepper, he's always, always, always advertising. One of his sponsors is uh, my Patriot Supply. So I thought, heck, I'll, okay, I'll go look and see what's on that. Well, I came across, they have freeze-dried instant coffee. All right, and I, I guess it's granules. And so I was like, what, what is this? I didn't know this was a thing. <clears throat> they offered... <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. I'm still getting over this respiratory thing. They offered like a 90 day bucket and uh, with 90 servings, or maybe it was 300 servings. I don't know. It was a little bit. Then they offered a bucket that had 720 servings of instant coffee, freeze dried, 30 year shelf life. Guess what I went for, y'all? Yeah, the 720. So here is what I got the other day. This is it. <laughs> This is my apocalyptic coffee. Let me find the label. All right, here it goes. Now, they now it doesn't say this was confusing to me, but then I figured it out. It's ready hour. That's what's on here. I don't see my Patriot supply on here. 
Maybe that's it right there. I don't know. But, um, yeah. Uh, so this is it. This is relatively light. Okay. So, um, 720. I showed this to Mike this morning. My husband, I was like, Mike, look what came in the mail. 720 servings of coffee. He said, oh, that ought to last you a month. <laughs> I thought, oh, that's funny. Oh, that's so funny. But, um, so, uh, I think what this is, is, uh, it's called Franklin's Finest. It had great reviews. Um, I do, oh, it has 25 years shelf life, but I bet it'd go another five if you needed it to. So I, th there are individual packets in here that have the coffee in it. Um, so I don't, I don't know what all it has in there. It's scraping against the side, but it has set all these packets. So when you open the packet, you're going to have probably several servings in one packet, and that's okay because even the packets will last a year. Man, I'll go through those. I'm not worried. But to me, um, this is a luxury item, and it will. It's worth having. I didn't think. I thought it was worth the price. It was just north of a hundred dollars. Um, I did the comparison if I were just to buy instant coffee and like vacuum pack it, it, it was about the same price. It wasn't that much different, y'all. So um, I went ahead and did this. I did get this on Amazon. I didn't get it on the My Patriot Supply uh, website. But uh, anyway, so that, I'm excited about that and I'm happy and it makes me relax a little bit more about my coffee um, shelf what I'm doing on a on a continual basis makes me feel a little more relaxed about that so there's that now then I did finish one second after the book I listened to it y'all that was like I don't know how many hours 18 hours of my life I listened to that thing it is a stinking long book all right hang on <clears throat> it is about and this is not, uh, this isn't a spoiler, so y'all, if y'all, I hate spoilers, so I'll tell you, I'll give you a spoiler alert, alert if I'm going to say something about the story, but I will, it, it is about once what happens after an EMP strikes the United States. Now, this may be a spoiler alert, so if you don't like that, you may want to stop the video and fast forward to the end or whatever, but um, I want a couple of things about this book. Uh, first of all, it is informative. All right, it does open your mind to, oh, wow, I hadn't thought of that. There were several, several um, scenarios that made me go, oh, okay, so cannibalism is going to be part of this disaster. Uh, and so, you know, those kinds of things um, uh, were eye-opening. If you have a weak stomach, don't listen to this. Don't read this book, all right? Because it's, it's pretty graphic. It's very graphic. Um, I, it's a man's book. I felt like it was a man's book written from a man's point of view, which is great. I don't have a problem with that. I think it was excellent in that regard. It was, um, there were, there were times I was like, yeah, 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 I get it. In that the, the dialogue was just kind of listing, um, what was going to happen next instead of actually living what was going to happen next. So that was okay. I, I kind of, you know, half listened on that. Um, there were not very many to me as it was well written, but it, there was, there were not, um, the development, uh, it was underdeveloped relationally. In other words, the characters, the character relationships were under, developed so that when somebody died I was like eh I don't even know that person you know that's how when I read or watch a movie I become very invested and immersed into the character stories and this was missing that that's okay I don't think that was his purpose in the story his purpose in the story is like to open up our eyes hey this crap can go go sideways really easily so there was that I'll just let you know that um there was um there was not, there was hardly any perspective of the home front. Uh, it was very group centered. In other words, the the revolution of the town, uh, the interaction of the people socially, how things were going to spin. Um, so there was no cooking, washing clothes, uh, how you were going to build a fire. Uh, filter water. I didn't see there was that was very very 
not in this book. Uh, some of it, but not. So it's not, it's not coming from that perspective. A couple of things that I think are sadly, sadly, absolutely irrelevant now is the amount of patriotism that was felt by the characters in the book. They were extremely patriot to the United States of America. Um, I think that's pretty much, I think there's a, that's nearly gone now. That's my, maybe that's me being jaded or cynical. So y'all filter that. I mean, you know, I may be wrong about that, but what I'm seeing is there's not a lot of loyalty to our country right now as being the great United States of America. So that, but that was a huge part of this book and a huge motivation uh, of the, of the townspeople to preserve the the country the the idea ideal of america so that was that was things that i thought i don't think that's that's going to i also think after the virus that hit the world um we're all a little more jaded and so there was an innocence uh with these characters that they i but i think now that we have literally in real life lived through lockdowns, shortages, rationing. We've, we've all lived through that across the world. So we're a little more sharper in the reality of that than those characters were. One, um, so those, those are the things that, and um, also technology obviously is missing. The level of technology now that would be like a gaping hole in people's lives if if an EMP goes off, would be devastating to the lifestyles of our people, including me. I mean, I, I'm not going to say, oh, our young people, they shouldn't be on their phones. Well, you know what? Y'all, I'm on my phone a lot too, all right? So, granted, I believe, to to me, the Zers that I know, and I hang out with them all the time, my son's a Zer, um, they're cool. And they they are hard workers. I've ne they don't. I've they've got a fantastic work ethic. I, they're yes. Do they play video games? Yes, they do. So I mean that's what they do. All right. So uh, anyway, I know y'all can like you know tell me what all's wrong with that, but I do think that they would have a trouble. I think it would be about ten days for them to adjust. I really do. In my circle. In my circle of Zers, that's what I think. But I think that their work ethic is such that, because um, our circle of friends, we're not lazy. So, uh, and we've never allowed our children to be lazy people. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I don't know how else to put it. So anyway, so that that's the things about one second after, after that I <clears throat> have come to I'm glad I glad I'm glad I listened to it. So I would recommend it in that it will educate you. Um but those were the things I noticed. Uh on a just a very brief thing, um my husband Mike is about to take a week off and I think y'all if we can if he will help. I don't know if you'll feel like doing this or not. Um but we're talking about making an old kind of washing machine, off-grid hand washing machine, the kind that has the, it's not an auger, it's an agitator, an agitator in the center that you turn, it's like a Johnny machine, I, I think is what it was called way back when, and it's like a half barrel with a crank, and um, man, on Lehman's, at Lehman's, they're $999, on Amazon Lehman's, $999, y'all, I think we can make one ourselves for about 150. So uh, if we do that, y'all, I'm going to show you that process. I'm excited about that. Now, let me read this word to you because we're running out of time. March 27th, 2024. In the darkest hours, the days, the nights of your aloneness, know this to be true. I am with you. This is what I heard the Father say to me as I was praying. I know, my children, I know the heaviness of this sin-filled world you live, for I lived there too. I know the sorrow, the loss, grief, loneliness. I know what you feel. Do you know I know? The days you walk this earth are short, for your life with me, everlasting, is forever. 
what may feel to you as being forever, a crisis never ending, will indeed end, and you will be with me forever. The physicalness of you melting away into spirit. So know this, my children, I walked what you are walking. All will be resolved in the end. Now concerning these turbulent days of confusion, be clear-minded, see the lost, and pray. Restore your worship to me, not in man-made ways, but with hearts that bow down, eyes that look up. Unrehearsed, understanding my love, my grace, my salvation, give me your heart. There is much coming meant to overwhelm you. Do not falter. Steady on in me. Know the source of these atrocities are the enemy. For even now he is exposing you daily to the evil. Look away. Run to me where safety awaits you. Tremble not. Instead, let my abiding presence fill your mind and heart. I am with you. Arise and let me flow in you. A wave of love and mercy never ceasing. Steady minds, steady hearts, as the very ground you stand on shifts beneath the coming sinfulness of evil plans. You are mine. I am with you, my lovely ones, unto the end. Soon, very soon, you will wonder what is happening. But I say to you, my remnant, I am happening. And so I asked Father, I was like, what kinds of things, what more do you want to say? Go inside the walls of my sanctuary, the place I dwell, your heart. Stay with me. Do you see a fish out of water gasping, twisting, churning itself, trying to get where it can live? That will be your nation soon, gasping for life. It has already begun. You are at the beginning of my warnings. Do you have lamps full of oil ready, ready? ready be ready as all my children always are i will give you everything of me your nation as your nation attempts to cut all your life support i say i am the way the truth the life come to me all who are weary and i will give you rest all right y'all hang on to that i think those are great words i found that to be very encouraging to myself i think that's from father you filter that through the holy spirit for yourself and you got to decide that for yourself y'all i think the collapse of the francis scott key bridge is let's pay attention to that let's pay attention to that i'm going to leave that where it is now until more information is out wow our hearts go out to the ones who lost their lives all right we'll be praying all right, until next time, y'all, stay safe, America. Do what you got to do. Get close to Jesus. Now is the time. This is Gina Lima Charlie. I'm out.